So we've seen how to create lists, how to manipulate lists, and how to edit lists. The last topic that we are going to talk about is how you can step through lists or any other kind of iterable object and do something to each item one at a time. This is called a for loop. So a for loop we can use basically on any kind of iterable thing. So what do I mean by iterable? An iterable thing is uh, is a, an object where you can do the first thing, then do the second thing, then do the third thing, then do the fourth thing, then do the fifth thing. So anything that you can move through one item at a time is an iterable thing. And since a list consists of uh, several slots that we can move through one at a, at a time, we can use a for loop with that. So as we iterate through the list, then the value of the object that comes after the for keyword is a variable that contains the item from the list that is the one we're currently focused on. So the first time the loop operates, the value of fruit is gonna be apple. The second time we go through the loop, the value is gonna be orange. The third time we go through the loop, it'll be banana and so forth until we have iterated through every item on the list and each time we iterate through one of the items on the list, we're going to do an indented, uh, the code that is in an indented code block. And after we've iterated through every item on the list, then we will go back out and, and continue with the code that's not indented and go on with the rest of the script. One important thing to notice is this colon the colon is basically a signal to Python saying, hey, get ready, there's going to be an indented code block. So here we can see an example. Here's my colon signal here. So I'm going to set the value of basket. Then I'm going to iterate through each item in the basket and print the string i81 plus concatenate the end of the particular item that we're talking about right now. So the first time that the loop carries it out, it, the, fruit, the value of fruit is going to be apple. So it will say, I ate one apple. It's finished the indented code block. It'll go back, and now we go to the next fruit, which is orange. It'll say, I ate one orange. Then it'll go back up. It'll loop to the next fruit in the basket, banana. And it will say, I ate one banana. So each time it executes the indented code block, the value of fruit is the next item that is in the list. Now in this example, I only have one line in the indented code block, but I could have actually many lines. And this is why I said in an earlier lesson, although the spacing that's in between um, items on a statement isn't really that important, the space that's in front of the statement, the indentation is extremely important because that's how we know, um, that's how we demarcate blocks of code. I also was just going to mention, we saw again that strings are kind of like lists um, that are made up of characters. And so we can, they are also iterable objects and the things that we can iterate through on them are the characters of, this, of the string. So if we use a for loop on a string, it will iterate through the first character, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. So just in summary, we um, use a for loop anytime we want something to loop a definite number of times. We want it to loop one time for each item in the list or one time for each character that's in a string. So let's go ahead and try a for loop. So here's the example I just talked about. Let's go ahead and run it. And we see each time it executes the indented line, it substitutes in the, uh, a different fruit as it iterates through the list. And then once it's iterated through the last item on the list, which is lime, then it goes out and continues with the non-indented code. And so it's prints, I am full now.
Now here is an example of iterating through a string. So here's a very long string. If we iterate through the string, which I've called word, it will first, the first time it does the loop, it'll do S. Then the second time it does the loop, it'll do U. The second time, the third time it'll do P and so on until it's gone through all the letters in the string. And the action that I'm having it take in the indented code block is to print the letter. Once it's gone through every letter in the word, it finishes the indented code block and it's going to go to the next non-indented code block and print this. So let's try that. And there we see it's printed each letter and then said that wore me out. 